Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I want to start today's video by telling a little story. I currently live in a two-story house with roommates, and this is important because the second floor gets extremely hot during any period of cold weather. Now this has been brought up to the landlord by me and the other roommates, but he always quips back with a smoking gun. Hot air rises. Now this is obviously a foreign problem, it's never been solved before. Multi-floor AC units and, you know, good air movement between floors isn't realistic, you know? It's impossible. So I did some creative thinking and thought, well, if hot air rises, that must mean that cold air sinks. And that's why I sunk $1,500 into a cryocooler. Now, the real reason I want a cryocooler is because I want to be able to on-demand liquefy pretty much any gas. Because of where I am, I need this cryocooler to be small and relatively quiet. So that automatically gets rid of all sorts of refrigeration systems or anything that uses a compressor, which really limits it to being one type, a Sterling cryocooler. Now, these are extremely hard to find, but I got super lucky, especially at the price that I bought it at. Whoever sold it must have been a pretty chill guy. Just for reference of how much these things can cost, there's currently a listing on eBay, as of when this video was released, for a guy selling it for like $4,000. What's funny is this listing used to be cheaper, but after no one was buying it, after a few bidding periods, the guy decided to raise the price another $500 for whatever reason. Peak economics. But I digress. Sterling cryocoolers are amazing devices. In terms of sci-fi level devices, they're up there with microwaves. Just as microwaves can melt metal or make soggy fries with the click of a button, with a simple plugging in of this device and you know, ramp up, you can liquefy almost anything. A Stirling cryocooler works on the exact same principle as a Stirling engine. However, instead of using a temperature differential to run an engine, you run an engine to get a temperature differential. If you want more information on how it works, I left a link in the description below to a great video that can describe it much better than I can. Now let's see what this thing can do. The first thing I did was design and print a water cooling jacket for the hot end of the cryocooler. This will ensure I get my maximum cooling capacity. Now, since this cryocooler runs on 60 Hertz, I just use a Variac to slowly ramp it up to the operating voltage of around 110 volts. I do about 10 to 15 volts per minute till I get to 110. After putting everything together and hooking it all up, this is what the full setup looks like. You can see the copper cooling coil to the right that I added to prevent the water from getting too hot. Here is my miniaturized control room where I'm able to monitor the voltage that I'm applying to the cryocooler and the temperature of both the cooling water and the cryocooled vessel. When the cryocooler is operating at its maximum voltage, it cools pretty fast. You can see right here how fast it's going down. It takes around 20 minutes to get down to around negative 193 degrees Celsius, which is when air starts condensing. From this point forward, you generate around 75 milliliters an hour of liquid air. It's been running for almost four hours and I'm about to stop it. This is what it looks like right after taking off the doer. You can see how cloudy the cryogenic liquid is, and this is primarily due to the contamination from normal ice and dry ice. Now you might think, that's pretty cool. So let's do something with it. I was kind of hungry, so I wanted to turn some of my chocolate milk into ice cream. We got a lot left. Now that is some shitty expensive ice cream. We can also do the classic of freezing a glove in. Uh... 
Yeah, no. How about we burn some things? Okay, so here's our liquid air inside of a beaker. Let's run some tests. So now I want to test the burning of a match. I've always wondered how liquid air acts. Well, it goes out. Interesting. Too much nitrogen. I want to try this again, but this time I'm going to soak some paper into the cryogenic fluid because hopefully that should be slightly more concentrated with oxygen. Whoa. Hmm. So that kind of worked. Not as good as pure oxygen, obviously, but it, it did burn. Let's try it again, but now instead of with paper or cellulose, we'll do isopropyl alcohol. Not only should we get isopropanol ice, but hopefully it'll be an interesting burn. Frozen isopropanol. So that was pretty disappointing. Turns out the oxygen doesn't exactly impregnate itself into the uh, isopropanol. Oh well, hopefully things in the future I can use pure oxygen and they'll be a lot cooler. In conclusion, I have at least two fun projects planned with this cryocooler, but if you guys have any ideas that you think would be really cool to try, please let me know.